Hey everybody, welcome back. I know it's been a little while, uh, which is going to become very clear very quickly when we start going over this video and we see how long ago I started working on it. Um, but today we're going to go over some more stacking options, uh, more specifically combination stacking. So uh, what this entails, and there's probably a better word for it, I don't know. Uh, if you have a, a correct terminology, uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments. But for all intents and purposes, for me, it's just combo stacking. Basically, what we've done before is specify like specific players that we want to stack. Those are very specific rules that apply to the players we specify, the exposures we specify. It's not very high level though. It, it's not. It doesn't apply across the board. It's just that grouping. So if we wanted multiple combinations you know we're gonna have to specify every single one of those and that can be very tedious especially when you get outside of the nba world for basketball it's pretty simple like if you have a, a tier one or s tier group of players that you want locked in and you want to make sure you're having a high number of those across all lineups you know you, you specify that list of players and you're off to the races uh, when you look at other sports specifically i'm thinking of football there are some other stacking scenarios that you want to probably incorporate not necessarily but in general it's good practice uh things like uh, for whatever team your quarterback is on for your lineup you would like a wide receiver or a tight end from the same team the theory being that if you have the quarterback and they're scoring lots of points lots of yards thrown lots of touchdowns whatever it is you can essentially double up on those stats by also having the receiver not every combination is great um, you look at some offenses that spread it around a lot more. Chiefs come to mind for me because I'm a Kansas City, big Chiefs fan. And, and it's kind of a crapshoot on who's going to have a big game once you get outside of Travis Kelsey, right? Like sometimes Juju has a good game. Sometimes he doesn't touch the ball. Sometimes everybody touches the ball, but nobody has a great game because he spreads it out enough that nobody really has a ton of yards or multiple touchdowns. So uh, when you start looking at things like that, those scenarios would become increasingly complex to factor in given the way we had done things before. You would basically have to pick every single team, go through and define, you know, the quarterback and the pairing, the quarterback and the pairing, which if you're only looking at certain teams, it might not be too bad for you. Um, but this will apply it across the board, uh, what we're going to go through here. So let's go ahead and jump in and start rolling. So first things up, um, we're going to import everything like normal. One thing you'll want to see uh, we probably haven't done before is importing stack, importing position stack. I honestly don't remember if I if we use them specifically, but they're in here, so probably so. Import our player sheet. Again, this is a FanDuel NFL player sheet, so if you don't have one left over from the NFL season, um, check my blog, and I will try and get this uploaded as quick as I can after the video goes live, and I'll have a link to my CSV file that you can download to play with and roll through this. As you can see, this is from September 11th. Again, I started writing this, what, exactly six months ago to the day almost, so... Let me go ahead and bring that in, start up our, our optimizer here at FanDuel, and obviously football, not basketball. Other than that, everything's the same. We're going to go ahead and get our baseline lineups. Um, we look through here, and just to real quick get a high-level look at what's going on, we're going to go ahead and use the print statistic function and see that, you know, we've got Tennessee and San Francisco on every single lineup because they're only doing 10. And then we take a look at this. We've got three players that are on every single lineup. And let's take a look at some of the Justin Herbert lines to see if he's got his own wide receiver. Nope. Uh, Mahomes has nobody. Mahomes has nobody. Yeah, so as we can see, we are not following, uh, using just the, the raw fantasy points per game, generating lineups with no other rules in place. We are not stacking quarterbacks and wide receivers, even by chance, um, which is fine. Again, you might not necessarily always want to do that, especially if you look at someone like uh, Jalen Hurts, who's going to get some rushing touchdowns. Um, it might not be worthwhile to get one of his receivers because odds are most of their touchdowns could be rushing. But let's go ahead and, and take a look, and we'll be comparing back to this as we go to kind of see how things change. Um, so we've got to spin up a new optimizer, okay? And we're going to want start with just a regular QB wide receiver stack, okay? Which means there's going to be one wide receiver from the team that the quarterback is on. So all we have to do is after we start our optimizer up, we need to use the add stack method from the optimizer, and we're going to call the position stack argument, and we're going to say QB wide receiver, okay? And that comes in as a list, and that's basically just reading in these positions and saying that for every single lineup we have, we need to stack a single team and fill those positions. 
And since there's only one wide receiver here, that means I want one wide receiver. Um, I need to update this. That means there will be one wide receiver based on how we wrote it. Um, if we put, you know, comma wide receiver again, then it would make it two wide receivers. And I don't have that written and I don't believe, but we can try that at the end to make sure that's how it works. But that is how it should work um, based on how the tool is written. So we go ahead and run that. Let's take a look at our new lineups. Um, we can see now we have Justin Herbert and Mike Williams. Justin Herbert, Mike Williams. And if we go ahead and check the statistics, we're going to see real quick that that is every single lineup combination is Justin Herbert and Mike Williams, which that's not ideal because if one of them has a bad game, every single one of your lineups is a dumpster fire now. And you're going to be very upset when you go check how your lines are doing. But we have shown that passing that argument does, in fact, stack quarterback and receiver from the same team. So let's go ahead and take another look. And now we're going to run the same thing, except we're going to say max exposure equals 0 0.2. Um, and we're not doing tight end yet, so we'll go ahead and fix that too. Um, so let's go ahead and run that, and, and let's see how it changed. So in theory now, we should have five different uh, stacks, right? Because our max exposure is 20%. We want a quarterback wide receiver stack, so that stack can only be used twice. Let's take a look. So we start out Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, just like before. Now let's see. Yep, there we go. Now we've got Kirk Cousins and we've got Adam Thielen. And we see again, again, it's that same combo. Then Joe Burrow and T. Higgins, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown. And Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, and Jimmy G, and Debo, Jimmy G, and Debo. So, and you can see a lot of those names are repeated throughout. Um, if we go back and look at our baseline run, we're going to see, you know, Debo, Adam Thielen, Herbert. Um, a lot of those guys are already being used. So, we've already identified them as good value on the slate. So, it's no surprise to see that that's where a lot of the stacks are coming from. Um, so it's pretty much what we'd expect. You know, nothing crazy, but it works. Um, look, take a look at the statistics. You know, it's pretty much what it's been the whole time. Nothing really changed. Uh, Debo is on every single line, even though he's only included in two of those stacks. And, you know, Derek Henry, Robert Woods are on every single lineup too, which again, you know, you're probably going to want to put some blanket exposure rules in here. But that for, for right now, we're just looking at the basics and how the stacking mechanism works. So if we re restart our optimizer again, and now we're going to say we want to stack quarterback and we want to stack wide receiver tight end. So now you can see this is set up a little different. Instead of just being one list, because it's just those two positions, right? Now we have a list that has one item, and the second item now is a tuple, okay? Um, it's just a, a data type in Python called a tuple. Um, we're not going to go too in-depth there, but... What this is, how this reads into the optimizer now is it's saying for our quarterback on our team, we need to make sure we have either a wide receiver or a tight end from the same team. All right. When you put them in the tuple like that, that's passed as one stack argument rather than quarterback, wide receiver, tight end. That would mean we need all three of them to be from the same team. This is saying we need a quarterback and either one of these two things. Okay. Uh, let's take a look here and we're not going to run the max teams right now. Uh, we're just going to run our regular optimizer. Go ahead and comment that out so it doesn't, nobody messes that up if they download this. So you can see we've got Herbert and we've got Mike Williams, Herbert, Mike Williams, no surprise. Uh, Kirk Cousins, Thielen, Mahomes, there we go. See, now we have Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Uh, so there's a, there, there is an example of the quarterback and the tight end rather than the quarterback and receiver, whereas the others have been quarterback receiver. Again, Mahomes, Kelsey, uh, Nick Foles, and tight end, Danny Pinter, mm -hmm. and again, and Kirk Cousins, and Adam Thielen. Then here again, we have Hertz and, and Goddard, Hertz and, or Murray, sorry, uh, Murray Williams, and we also have a running back from there which uh, that may not be ideal because if you're stacking quarterback wide receiver, you're probably going to want to avoid the run game on that team because, again, the odds of the pass game and the run game going off are relatively low. 
Um, some teams make it work sometimes. Again, look at the Eagles. You know, they usually have uh, quite a bit of pass yards, quite a bit of rushing yards every game. But um, in general, that's not a good overall strategy. So there, there are ways to combat that, which we'll be going over in our combo stacking part two video. Um, and real quick, we are going to go ahead and rerun this. Oh, let's go ahead and print the statistic out so it's there. We can see. Still have those three guys on every lineup. All right. No surprise. Um, let's go ahead and run this. But let's do wide receiver, wide receiver. Instead of passing a tuple and instead of wide receiver, tight end. So let's say um, you really want quarterback and two receivers from the same team. So this is going to be the difference from passing wide receiver tight end as a tuple versus removing those parentheses and passing them as three separate list items, right? So now, in theory, if we are correct, um, this is going to force a quarterback and two wide receivers onto every single lineup from the same team. So let's take a look there. We have Kirk Cousins, we have Adam Thielen, we have Justin Jefferson. Kirk Cousins, Thielen, Jefferson. Okay. Herbert, Jason Moore Jr., Mike Williams. Herbert, Jason Moore Jr., Mike Williams. All right. So it is running as intended. So if you want a one or the other position to be included in your stack, it needs to be passed as a two point. If you want, so basically every sing singular item in your list whether it's a tuple of multiple positions or a singular position, each of those counts as one item in your stack. Um, so that, that's a good way to think of it. Um, having a tuple wide receiver, wide receiver is no different than just having a single wide receiver there because it's looking and pull one of them out. Mm -hmm. But we did establish that is in fact how it works. So we were correct in our assumption. Okay, um, so that's all we've got for the this intro to combo stacking here. It's going to be a little bit shorter of a video. Um, I know some of the longer videos are a little bit harder to sit through in one sitting. So we're trying to break some of these up into more basic concepts to break them out over a couple smaller videos. Uh, makes it for easier for me to write, develop, record, edit, and post, and makes it easier for you to watch and learn. So seems like a win-win. If you guys disagree with that, let me know in the comments and we can you know, go back to making larger videos like that. That's not a problem. Um, but I think this is, is probably a better mix overall. Um, once again, thank you to everybody in the Patreon. Um, I know that I've been pretty inactive. I've been, you know, answering questions in Discord, email, whatever. <laughs> but as far as actually posting content and doing stuff like that, it's been a little, a little inactive lately. Um, I've had a lot going on. Got behind. No big deal. We're back at it now. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, I've made some some announcements in the Discord about things we got coming up. I've kind of hinted at it on the community tab on the YouTube page, um, doing some polls and whatnot. Um, so if, if you like this contact content and you like this or going, I think I do a good job. Definitely stay tuned because uh, we got a, a lot of big things coming down the pipeline. And I would love for you guys to be the first ones to try everything out and get a feel for it. Give me some feedback. So on that note, thank you all for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.